Okay, now that we've learned about fossils and how they're formed and the different kinds of fossils that you can have, let's see what we have in our little box of treasures here. Go ahead and turn to page 10 in your booklets and we'll open up our box and see what we've got. What do we have here? Number one, of course, corresponds to number one on your table on page 10. And within this circle right here, we have a tiny little footprint. I can count one, two, three toes. Could be a small bird, maybe a tiny little raptor dinosaur, even possibly a lizard. But uh, the important question to ask first is, is this part of the animal's actual body? Or was this made while it was doing something and it moved on? The answer to that question is, it was made while it was walking through the mud. The animal's body is no longer here. It stepped in the mud and kept going. So this becomes a trace fossil. Now, what kind of trace fossil? It's a little more complicated. Was this fossil made while it was moving or burrowing, while it was feeding, or while it was pooping? The answer to that is it was made while it was moving. So we would call this a track, trail, or burrow. Essentially, it's a track trace fossil. Let's look at number two. Here, we have a tiny little oyster shell. It's got a big hole right in the middle. And you might think, oh, somebody drilled that in there to make this into a piece of jewelry. Turns out it was dug out of the ground with that hole. So that was actually in the shell when it was buried and became a fossil. So this one's a little tricky. Okay, so about the shell itself. Is that a body fossil or a trace fossil? Well, it's the shell that was in the original living oyster, isn't it? So that is actually a body fossil. What about the hole? Was that hole part of the original living animal's body? The answer is no. That hole was actually drilled into the shell by a snail that wanted to eat this oyster for lunch. So the hole itself is a feeding trace. You see that? The snail that made the hole is no longer here, but the hole that he made in order to eat this oyster for lunch is still there. So this one's actually both. Kind of a trick question. It's a body fossil of an oyster, but a feeding trace for a snail. Number three. Wow, an important fossil. This is actually a piece of coal. We use coal every day to make electricity, so it's very important to people. But how many stop and ask, what kind of fossil is this? Well, let's think about it. Is this black substance part of an original body of an organism, of a tree? And the answer is yes. This is the carbon that was in the living tree. Therefore, it's a body fossil. What kind of body fossil? Do you remember which kind of body fossil leaves you with just the carbon? That's right, carbonization. Number four. Number four is a piece of turtle shell. We've actually seen this earlier. I 
think I stated earlier that this is the original shell that was in the living animal. However, it has been altered by having all of the spaces inside filled up with minerals. So first question, is this a trace or body fossil? That's right, it's a body fossil because this is part of the original turtle animal. Now, in terms of what kind of body fossil, the spaces are filled with minerals, meaning it's been permineralized. Very good. Number five, it's a beautiful impression of a fern. Now this is trace or body. We actually have an impression of the original fern, don't we? So you're right, it's a body fossil. What kind of body fossil? Well, we molded the leaves. And if you look very carefully inside there, you can see some black impressions black substances along with the yellow in there. And that black is actually carbon. So like the coal, we've reduced the original leaves down to carbon. So we have a mold of the leaf and carbonization. Number six, very interesting fossil. Very common around Kanab. This is actually sand that filled up the inside of a burrow. Now, the burrow was made by a shrimp. Is the original shrimp's body in here? Look very carefully. Nope, I don't see it. All we have is his burrow. So is this a trace? or a body fossil. It's a trace fossil. Now, this is actually not the burrow, is it? This is sand that filled up the burrow, which was a hole. So we've made a cast or a mold of the original burrow. Number seven, another oyster shell, just like number two. Okay, so you should, you should get this one really quickly. Trace or body? Oops. That's right, body. What kind of shell? Well, we'd have to chemically analyze it, but we're going to assume that it's essentially unaltered. The original animal was made of calcium carbonate, and I suspect this is still the same mineral. So, unaltered shell. Number eight. Lots of this around Kanab, other places in southern Utah. This is petrified wood. Now, believe it or not, the original cells and cellulose and lignin and other things inside of wood are still preserved inside this fossil, just like the turtle shell. But all the space has been filled up with minerals. You can even see a knot here where a branch used to grow out of the tree. Is this a trace or a body? Is it part of the original tree or just some sort of evidence that the tree's activity. That's right, it's a body fossil. And like the turtle shell, it's full of minerals. So we would say it's permineralized. Very good. This one's a little tricky. Number nine. This is actually dinosaur skin. Beautiful impressions from a baby dinosaur. 
Is this part of the original animal's body? Yes or no? That's right, it's part of the body. Now, is the original skin still present? The answer is no. All we have are the molds of the skin. There's not even any carbon film left here. So what we're looking at are molds of the skin. And I'll just give you this one. It's an internal mold, sand that was inside the carcass pushing out, making it look like the original scales. Number 10, exciting. This is actually amber. I'm going to take the lid off this box. Those are chunks of tree sap that are millions of years old. 75 million years old to be exact. What form of fossilization is this? First of all, is it a trace or body? This is tricky. This is tree sap. It's like the blood of the tree. So can you see that this would actually be a body fossil? It's the blood, the resin, the sap, the fluids that flowed inside the living tree as part of its body. So this is actually a body fossil of a tree. Now sometimes body fossils of other animals are actually preserved inside this body fossil of a tree. But in this case, I don't think we have any mosquitoes in there. And what do we call that when tree sap and tar and pitch and things like that come pouring out? Polymerization. That's right. Last specimen, number 11. You guys recognize this shape? It's a nice little spiral. Coiling upwards like that. Almost looks like a clown's hat. Now, it's maybe hard to tell from the camera and what you're seeing here, but the original shell isn't present. It's been stripped away. So I'm not looking at any actual shell of a snail. I'm actually looking at the sand that got inside the shell and filled it up. Is it a trace or a body fossil? Well, it's the original shell, or at least the evidence of the original shell that was in the living animal. So this, therefore, is a body fossil. Now, what kind of body fossil? Well, as I said, the sand is all that's left. The shell's gone. So it's the stuff that was on the inside making a mold on the inside of the shell. So we call that a internal mold. Very good. All right, uh, to wind up our little exercise together, I wanted to go through the review questions at the back of the handout on page 11. So please turn to page 11, where we have these five questions. And let's go through them together, shall we? Number one, in what type of rock do most fossils occur? Remember, those rocks that form at the Earth's surface from sheets of debris. You remember which kind that is? That's right, sedimentary rocks. Number two, which type of fossil provides record of a creature's activities? Okay, things like feeding, walking, and even pooping. Do you remember what we called those? Those are, that's right, trace fossils. Three, which of the following are good places for a creature to be fossilized? Let's actually read this list. River channels, floodplains, 
shallow ocean bottoms, or D, all of the above. Now, do you remember we talked about rivers as being good places to bury things because lots of sand and mud are carried down the channels of rivers. Floodplains, also great places to bury things during a flood. C, shallow ocean bottoms, another really great place to bury a dead animal during a storm. So the answer would be D, yes, all of the above. Four, what type of fossilization occurs when a creature becomes trapped and covered with tree sap? Remember that? Do you remember what we call fossil tree sap? That's right, amber. So if we catch an animal in amber, then we polymerize it, right? You remember that? So that's polymerization. And finally, number five, what body parts of a creature are most likely to be fossilized? Now, is it going to be the soft, squishy bits like eyeballs? Or is it going to be the hard things like bones and teeth and maybe even fingernails? What do you think? Muscles and organs? Claws and scales? Bones and shells? None of the above. Well, of the, the choices that we have, the bones and shells are the most durable, right? The hardest, toughest, most resistant parts of the animal. So the answer would be C, bones and shells. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thank you for uh, tuning in with us and learning about fossils. <laughs>